Hi everyone, this is Christophe from NowPlay and I'm joined by my colleague Arnaud. Today we are going to tell you about Smart Proxization, which is an APIization strategy we developed and formalized in NowPlay, taking in account all feedbacks and experience from our consultant and also gathering information, interesting information and digesting it from the different interesting people we met, especially in API days. We are going to discuss the foundation of um, smart proxization and see how a really technical asset becomes uh, an opportunity for business. We're going also to discuss how to implement smart proxization with a focus on governance and uh, a few mistakes to avoid and how to avoid them. Finally, in the conclusion, we'll get back to um, the API uh, management and API program track, linking them to uh, smart proxization and in the end, a uh, question and answer session. I'm Christophe Bondini. I'm the CEO for Nowplay, which is a consulting company created in 2011. At first with digital projects, including video games. And uh, today we are really focused on the API and API management growing ecosystem. And I'm Arno Gavazzi, Cloud API Architect, uh, Cloud Solution Architect and API Architect, a Senior Consultant in Open. So let's start with the basis. So we are going to discuss about API proxies. They are different from the backend API. Backend API are the API that you will find at the bottom or the top of your application. They can be uh, developed in-house applications. They can be uh, both on-shelf applications. They can be hosted on the cloud or on-premise. With the application, actually, you don't have lots lots of things to do with the API is except using them because you don't have many choice and it's main main and it's often formatted sorry by the technology you used even if you have started your API management program you might already have one or more API getaway in your networks it has been promoted by the infrastructure teams it's mainly for network security and have only one gateway open instead of having many communication from the internal to the external system. But today an API gateway comes with lots of other capabilities from security policies, authentication and so on. And it is hosting the API proxy. Actually, if we put in perspective from the um, consumer point of view, the consumer of your API only know your API proxy. He should have no knowledge of your backend API. That is why we do think that there is something to do there and we are going to explain you what we are doing. The other pillar of the foundation for uh, smart proxization is actually the IT urbanization. As a former enterprise architect, I used uh, API management a lot in my plans because the mission for the enterprise architect is to align long-term IT strategy with business goals and actually you are the first thing you are doing in your uh, appization pro program is uh, first to know what to um, transform in API when you know, get to know your um, IT architecture, you first organize your application through different domains. This is only one example of domains. It can be far more detailed or far less detailed, but mostly far more. And uh, when you have your application in the different domains, actually, these applications are communicating between each other. There are communication between domains. And if you are in a point-to-point -point architecture, you handle with a spaghetti nodal here. But here we decided to put just big arrows and to focus on what are we exchanging. Between domains, we are exchanging around business entities. We are exchanging data about orders, about customers, about warehouses. And this is where we start to think about the smart proxization. And this is it. The goal with smart proxization is to build your API proxy, not as a reflection of your backend API, but as a business entity which you are actually providing an interface for. An example here, for the warehouses proxy, actually I gather information from the ERP 
and maybe it's a reflex here of my ERP backend uh, API. But if I look at the customer or at the items, actually I see that I've got several backend API. For example, for the items, I can gather the uh, item catalog information from the PIM. I gather the assets from the DAM, but I can ask also for the stock level and I get that from the ERP. The idea here is really your proxy is not designed by the technical, but, uh, but by the business, it's business first. And when you start your APIization program, we advise to start API proxy first. And to achieve this, there is uh, some important step to be, to be considered prior to code that will help you to uh, setting the good foundation for that. First, to have a nice and even a beautiful API design across all your future endpoints, uh, you have to start writing uh, an API design guidelines. This document is a kind of marketing signature, it's a blueprint. It will be the standard, uh, your future consumer of, uh, of your API, today's API and tomorrow's API, will find from endpoint to endpoint. In this document, you should write some rules about how to name the custom headers, for instance. What would be uh, the, the convention, naming convention and casing convention for attributes or for URL, etc., etc. Once this document is established, shared and validated across your uh, company, you can start uh, to design and to write your open API specification for your uh, proxy. This has to be done by considering only functional and business perspective and not the technical aspect of that. I know that writing some open API specification in Yammer can be considered as a part of code, but let's focus on entity, business entity and object first. Having this open API uh, specification written brings you uh, also two main advantages uh, before, code, before the code. Uh, first, it's something that is easily shareable. You can share at the very early stages of the design uh, your API specification document with other entity of, your, of the company, all the stakeholders the, the behind the API. It could be the business team, the development team, marketing team, etc. Goal of that is to gather some feedback and comment for, from them to potentially identify some use cases you may have missed until uh, this uh, document is shared. Having it at the very early stage, once it has been validated by everyone, will also bring you two main, uh, second main, uh, sorry, uh, the second main advantages of this document is to have the capacity of uh, parallelization of the code. Once it has been defined, designed, and validated and, and, and shared, you can uh, easily set up a mock server. This server will, of course, distribute some fake data, but it can be very uh, helpful for your consumer, yeah, maybe at first the internal ones, but uh, to let them start developing their own application and the application that would consume your API. And at the same time, you can develop your own proxy and, and uh, different policies to be, to be embedded in it. Just a slight comment about all of this. Uh, until now, we uh, discussed about and we said more than once that the design of the API should be functional and business oriented, of course. Uh, but sometimes you may have some constraints, some design constraint brought by uh, some external elements and some technical elements. Talking about, for instance, the deployment strategy. Maybe you will have some constraint because of your load balancer or uh, the URL management you have or any other uh, kind of uh, technical uh, infrastructure uh, constraint. Or it could be also because of the proxy implementation solution. Uh, you selected one software to implement your proxy and it can bring some also uh, some constraint in terms of pure design of your API uh, endpoints. So that is one of the reasons why you should very early in the design phase involve your architect team and architect. And now we are going to discuss about the operational execution of smart proxization. And indeed, it is really important from the beginning to adopt a cross-functional governance. Actually, on API programs, it can be pushed, for example, by technical 
and it might end in a nightmare for business who is not understanding at all what is going on with this uh, architecture and might cut budget and might restart later with a new uh, solution. On the other hand, it can be pushed by the business and sadly it uh, encounter and it crashes in the world of technical realism. That is why it is really, really, really important to adopt this constructional governance to involve every stakeholders to share common goals and take in account every constraint and needs from the different domains involved in your program. It's also uh, important to uh, start a collaborative decision ma 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 sorry, making. You need to use co-design workshop, you need to involve again everybody. And you need to adopt policies and standards. Arno mentioned the guidelines, that is an important point. It's not only about one API proxy, it's regarding all your API proxy. It is really important that an external coder who already know one or two of your API proxy, discover easily the new one. Oh, because it will find the same keyword, for example, to deal with pagination. Also, I, little joke here, but you will have addressed at the group level or at the company level if you use snake case or camel case. So this is really important to make sure that your any new developers it will start to use your API will continue because it will find it easy to discover new APIs. It is also important to uh, have a proxy owner and name it from the design stage. Why? Because you need to have one single point of contact for your proxy. You do not want to have to deal with that application leader, that other application leader, and so on. It is the work of the API proxy owner to do that for you. The proxy owner is also responsible for the documentation. Uh, Arno mentioned the OIS, that's part of the responsibility of the proxy owner. And as with great power comes responsibility, in the other is true also, and we need to empower the proxy owner with the final word. When there is long discussion between domains on how to address that or that capabilities, it is the proxy owner who needs to be able to say, okay, we'll do like that because. Finally, we're pushing a little bit further the proxy owner in our dream scenario. Uh, actually, we evangelize to have the proxy owner where also a data steward at. Why? Because the proxy owner actually needs to know everything about this data. All data exposed by the proxy must be uh, clearly documented and actually the proxy owner must know every source of truth for this data. He must monitor everything regarding uh, the data journey, especially on two levels. When the data um, are get getting out of the backend API and also when the data are passing through the proxy, every consuming every modification must be tracked and monitored and this is also why the proxy owner is the key interlocutor when it comes to data integrity and compliance you need to have an interlocutor knowing the business knowing the techniques but also knowing the data layer of the proxy so I'm pretty sure you already seen this kind of diagram representing the life cycle of the software development, maybe more uh, usually under the form of an infinite loop symbol. Here, we just wanted to uh, redesign it a little bit to highlight the iteration approach that uh, has to be applied to three main pillars of this loop, the design, the build, and the release. The goal of this iteration is really to experiment in each phases uh, that means to fail fast in order to be able to improve and refine the global solution quickly. You should also integrate somewhere uh, a way to gather some uh, a mechanism to gather some feedback. Feedback from who? Feedback from your end users, of course, but also from the other teams involved into the, the world process and lifecycle of the API. 
talking about the support teams that may be in contact with your final cons consumer, uh, DevOps team for the deployment and release management, or marketing team uh, to make the promotion of your API outside or to imagine some other uh, usages of, of your APIs. So this feedback should be gathered in different ways. You, you, you have the choice, in fact, it doesn't matter. It can be a website, support website, it can be a ticketing system, it can be, I don't know, uh, a classical web form or, or a email address, or let's be crazy, maybe an endpoint, an API endpoint for that. Uh, so anyway, feedback is really important. And by gathering this feedback, plus uh, getting a lot of metrics and log usages uh, and traces uh, represented by the observer into this, uh, this loop, you should be able and you will be able to identify some improvement areas. Uh, maybe a very slow endpoint because response time increase in real usages or uh, use, not, used, not so used endpoints that could be removed. But be careful, removing an endpoint is a breaking chain, so release management can be uh, more tricky. Or, or the opposite, to identify some other use cases that has been worked around by your consumer that may help you to identify the missing endpoints you should think about. Having also the usage statistics about uh, about the, the, the sorry the usage statistic of your API can be also very helpful from the management point of view. In the sense, you will have some figures and and KPIs to share with the management to justify the uh, the ROI return on investment done on the NPI for for the API potentially also to. Uh, get some other additional budget for any other endpoints or whatever. We would like also just to make a quick focus on one particular situation we encounter several times during our um, the, the project uh, we were working on together is the location, <coughs> sorry, the location of the business rules. Uh, nowadays, all the proxy systems are able to do a lot in terms of technical and code aspect. You can code whatever you want. However, uh, you have to consider that a proxy should embed only two kinds of uh, actions and should perform these actions uh, that can be categorized in two, uh, two, two, two ways. Sorry. First is the security. Christoph mentioned it earlier. Uh, the security can be, for instance, the prevention from the DDoS, uh, the token validation or API validation, applying some quotas and limitations to avoid uh, being uh, overloaded by the course, um, and, and so on. So, very focusing on security. The other category is the cosmetic. Cosmetic is mainly attribute mapping or re, uh, renaming some attributes because of constraint from the backend that add some extra characters, for instance, or by removing some uh, data that uh, should not be uh, exposed all the time uh, to reduce uh, the data exposure. And now on the conclusion, actually we are getting back to API management and API program because we did focus on the API gateway, but API gateway are the basis for API management. API management come with other capabilities. We mentioned two here, which are monetization and a really better user follow-up because you get your, your user registered and so on through portals. But let's get back on API proxy and API product. Today, if you reach a high level, a higher level of maturity in your API proxy, you are able to deliver to your business interlocutor, like the lady here, a pure and simple uh, catalog of data and services for your company organized by business entity, which are API proxy. But let's focus on business entity here. This lady is able to build API products. She knows nothing about techniques. She just focused on the business and she is able to build API product combining different API proxy. As a reminder, an API product is a group, coherent group of API proxy dedicated to one context. Here we've got two contexts. The first one, inventory management. Okay, we'll gather information from the warehouse proxy, stock level and so on but also maybe from the item items proxy, because we want to know exactly and have information about the product we are actually storing. 
Then we've got another context, e-commerce website. Here we have two proxies, one for items. Connected to PIM and DAM, we'll have everything to present the, the items on the, on the website. So we are able to present the product, but we are also able to give the stock for that product. So the customer will know in time if his order will be delivered in time or not. Also, we will have all the information concerning the customer, which can come here only by the CRM or could also come from the ERP if you want to know the former orders, for example. That is why we do think that smart proxization is a really good first step for your APIization program. You should think about smart proxization before adding to API product and API management. We have this code, make it simple but significant, and we found it would quite easily relate to uh, API proxy. Make your API proxy simple, but also significant, aka related to your uh, business entity. And that's it for our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, see you in another session.